Uh, just a real quick look at the outside. You know, 15 year boat, the gel coat looks excellent. And you can even get it to more of a mirror finish by using the Finesse It 2 3M wax product. But you know, it's got little little scuffs on the rub rail, but nothing major. The rub rail's in good condition. There's the first little scratch um, in the blue. I've got the blue ordered. I think it's going to fill that up easy. Um, you can wet sand it, polish it right in. Same thing here. They used to have a bimini. They scratched two spaces. It's been like that since I got it. Just never took the time to fill them in and polish it and get it right. So it, uh, it, it really is in good shape for its age. You know, I, it's hard to see. There's some fine scratches here where kids have slid in with their life jackets, that sort of thing. All that can be polished out and be gone. Um, there's a little bit bigger scratch, but, but like I said, you know, from five feet, you can't see anything other than just a good gloss finish. Um, this side, same thing, two scratches from where they had the bimini hinge. Um, the patch kit, I think, may be enough to fill these cracks and fill these holes, but if you wanted to be perfect, you could definitely, you know, touch up all of these little items and, and it'd be really sharp. Same thing back here, it looks really good. Five feet away, real glossy. You know, you get up close, you can see just fine scratches where, um, you know, kids have slidden in with their life jackets and, and that sort of thing. But all that will come out with, the, uh, with that Finesse 2 polisher. Um, I think there's one, one, a little, one scratch somewhere. I think that's wax. Yeah, that's just wax. Um, there's one more scratch, a little scratch here in the logo, a little scratch here. These come out without a problem. It's just a matter of buffing them with a compound and then buffing them with the polisher, and it comes right out. A little bit of smudge from the lake. Um, transom, it has a little fading in it. It hasn't been fully polished, but you can bring all that back very easily. But, you know, for, for the most part, it looks good. Let's see, I don't know where that other small scratch is, but, but um, a little discoloration there. I, that'll come off with the cleaner. There are some fine, fine scratches. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this under here where we take a vacation to Smith Mountain Lake. We keep it on a lift and it has longer bunks on the lift. And so they've some real fine scratching there, but I mean, nothing you can feel. I mean, it feels as smooth as glass, but you can definitely see where it's rubbed a little bit. The, you know, we've never beached it, never hit anything. There's a little light smudge on the, the bottom here, but that's from that, the, the roller wheel. Um, so, for the most part, it's just a good solid boat. It's been stored in my garage for six years and then the two previous owners had it on a lift and it was under a boathouse. So it's never really just sat in the sun constantly and and you can tell because it's, the gel coat's just really good shape. I mean, I had a 91, it had sat outside a lot. You get a lot of chalky look you really have to fight it to keep it glossy, but I mean, you can see gloss here. See a little reflection there. This this hasn't even been polished in two years, so it uh, if you hit it with a polish, I mean, you're just going to get a near perfect finish. But we just chose not to do it because we have four kids and they love to jump in and out of the boat all the time. So, um, but. But yeah, definitely potential to take it to the next level and have it super, super sharp. But, um, and then once again, the trailer, it's got a couple of little nicks. I think these were the bands from where it was shipped to the dealer and it never got touched up. Um, I've got paint that matches real well. It's just a little surface scratch with rust on it. Um, there's a little bit of 
a little bit of rust where the water just sits on top of that cross member when you come out of the water everything else drains you know the fenders they're a little faded you know these take direct sunlight it's fiberglass I don't think it's as good a coat of like the boat is so you've got to compound and polish those to get them to look top-notch so um, like I said this is a or a I listed in the post. This is a MS210 trailer, 2005. So the bunk configuration for the 210, the Maristar 210, is obviously different than this X1205 hull. So we had, I think we had to shorten the, or actually I think we had to elongate the the uh, the bunks up into this cross member here. We just got flat bar set the boat on the trailer, pulled it up to the right spot, welded it in, and uh, it's, it's trailers really well. I, the Maristar, I may, I'm not sure how the weight is set up here, but it, it does, it is a, a, a few pounds tongue heavy, but you know, you can't pick it up from the tongue like you can most boats that are perfectly balanced, but it doesn't, it doesn't drag the the truck down because it's not overly tongue heavy so but good boat many many years left of use hope this is given a good picture of what what it all looks like um, all the windshields they're all in excellent shape clean up really really well uh, bimini top is new so everything's in pretty good condition so the bags are emptying now. I just thought I'd do a quick walk around. The vinyl's in great condition. It's kind of hard to see. There's a little mark there. I don't know if that's from a life jacket or what, but you know, little things like that to be expected with a 16-year-old boat. There's a little small crack about, I don't know, an inch and a half long. Um, it's been there since we've had it, so it hasn't spread. Uh, these seats have been redone, but not while I've owned the boat during the last six years, but they're in good shape, good soft feel to them. Um, yeah, there is a small crack in the driver's seat, nothing too big, not a big deal. This piece actually comes out. You could probably have it redone uh, by itself. Uh, most shops are have a, it's pretty easy for them to match the blue piping and the vinyl my trusty assistant here. This is the new seat that we had done. The piping matches great. One of the best interior shops in, in uh, Raleigh. These guys, you guys think we're sinking with all the ballast spraying out. Um, new Sony speakers. Uh, it's just, we just run it off the uh, the head unit. There's no amp, just a simple system. It sounds pretty good. Um, there is the small incision on the motor cover. Another small one here, but for the most part, the vinyl feels good, looks good, it's clean. Uh, this seat was done when I bought it. He had cut it, so he had it completely rewrapped for me. Um, this sun deck I had redone about a month ago. Uh, the uh, you can probably see the stainless steel screw here. That is uh, the, the crack in the one of the pieces that goes across. It still holds the you know all the weight of the riders, and it just hasn't been a big deal. But I'm sure that you could find a shop to replace it fairly easily. On the bimini top, double wakeboard rack here, wakeboard kneeboard combo over here. Um, the carpet, you know, it's a little matted down. It's not as fluffy as, you know, like a new interior would be, but it uh, feels good. It, it's fairly clean. No major stains anywhere. Those are watermarks from our feet. All new cup holders. Um, new bilge pump. New blower fan. 
put the new Clarion remote in and the dash. We took out the uh, the clock that was there. Uh, all the gauges work fine. There are a couple little, there's one little hairline crack in this speedometer. I'm not sure if I bumped into it or something, but it doesn't distort the view or anything. So just haven't felt the need to replace it, but um, everything uh, works as expected. The stereo is just four new Sony speakers. I think they're like 40 or 50 RMS wattage. And um, they run pretty good off the head unit. There's no amp. Trying I just wanted to take a second to explain the ballast system that we've installed. There's two switches on the dash. I just took out accessory one and two. We weren't using them for anything and put a fill and empty switch. So the left switch controls the bow, the integrated bow sack. Um, turn it on. You know, it doesn't have a timer like the new boats. My, my indicator is when one of the cup holder pops up. Yeah, it's a little cheesy, but it works great. And you know that you've got just the right amount of water in it. You can see it's crinkled because it's, and fill it up with about 80 to 100 pounds more of water. That is the vent line that vents out the side and, uh, and it wraps all the way around. So this bag has one fill line, one vent line, and two drains. Uh, a drain comes down under the helm into this area near the ski pylon under this panel here and there's also a drain line that comes through um, under this side so you can drain both back legs of the bag at the same time this panel uh, screws down with screw two screws i just leave the screws out because it stays in place just fine and that way you can easily pull the panel up slide it up the ski pylon and look at the pumps they're tsunami aerator pumps they work great I've mounted them low in the boat so they prime easily. So we fill the front, we fill the rear. The rear bag is a 750 and we keep it to the left side to kind of offset for the driver weight. You've got the fill line, the drain line, and this is the pump out for the rear bag. The rear bag, what we learned by accident is that when this bag fills up, because of the way the lines are running the boat, the drain line for this 750 actually fills the ski locker 350 without a problem. So this bag you can see is starting to fill up as well. Um, I've got a T-switch in here if you want to you know, if, if you really want to max everything out, you can fill this one up, throw the, the, the uh, ball valve, and then fill this back one up. It's, it's easy to watch when the ski locker's filling up, <clears throat> excuse me, because you can see the bag swelling up under the door. And, uh, and if it keeps running and you forget about it, then water will start to come out uh, the uh, rear discharge. So pretty clean system easy to take out if you didn't want to use it um, we tried to drill as few holes as possible so um, you, know, you just wouldn't have a lot of useless holes in it if you took it out so um, that is the ballast and so we can hit empty empty on the front discharges out the side you know, we have 1100 tsunamis to fill and 750 tsunamis 
can empty the rear as well. And because they're not the high-end impeller style pumps, they will not suck the bags bone dry. Um, they'll pull about 90, 85, 90 percent of the water out. So oftentimes, especially in the ski locker, we just leave that water in the bag. There's not a whole lot of weight to it. And, and um, then we put it up for the winter. We take all the bags out, dump them, drain them, dry them, and you're good to go. Motor is very quiet, it runs very smoothly, no shakes, no jiggles. Very quiet inside when the engine cover's closed. Okay, we've got about 80% of the bags full and just wanted to do one small run to show the weight.